everybody, Dan Holstein here, helping your business take flight. Who hates meetings? We all do, right? When they're unproductive, that is. I'm going to be sharing some strategies with you this week on how to run an effective meeting to make it a productivity maker and not a time waster, so stick around. So if you're the owner of a high growth business, the last thing you probably want to do is to stop for more meetings. And your team probably doesn't want to attend your meetings anyway. Uh, most meetings are basically a waste of time. Um, they go over time, they meander, nothing gets done. Everyone feels like they just have their time wasted and they'll never get that time back during the day. But meetings can be your secret weapon, a, a fantastic productivity tool to keep the team on point, focused, accountable, and moving your enterprise forward. So. I want to share with you in this video a couple of strategies that uh, I, my clients find useful for making sure they run effective meetings so they can actually grow their business and make their meetings a highly effective tool for growth. So number one thing, we want to establish some ground rules. When we're in the meeting environment, what is acceptable and non-acceptable behavior? Uh, for example, cell phones down and off, right, so there's no interruptions. One person speaking at a time, so no sidebar conversations happening, no interruptions. Um, participation, making sure everyone understands that they have to participate in the meeting. They have to arrive prepared. Things like that. You want to make sure that everyone is clear on those ground rules so they can adhere to them so that you can have an effective meeting. The next thing is we, we have a timed agenda for the meeting. And what I mean by that is there's certain things that you want to cover in the meeting. I'll, I'll share an example in a minute. And you want to make sure that you're giving a specific amount of time to each of those agenda areas. And as you, as you implement something like this, you'll find that you may need to expand or contract certain areas, give them more or less time. You'll kind of feel that as you go. The next thing is we want to start on time. And that sounds very simple. Of course, we'd start on time. But a lot of meetings don't start on time because we're waiting for somebody who's a little bit late or running behind. We need to send a strong message of discipline here in the, in the meeting that we're going to have good meeting discipline. We're going to start on time every time so that your team will show up and they, they know that it's, that it's going to start without them if they don't show up and they might miss out on their contribution or accountability. Uh, the next thing is we need to end on time, right? So if we're starting on time, we need to end on time. That way people respect the boundary of the meeting and they can, they can block their time around it and know that's not going to get impinged upon. Next up, I want to share with you the agenda overview for the meeting. Oh, one other thing. When you assign a, when you're going to time the meeting, assign a timer, someone that actually runs the clock and says, okay, enough, we have to uh, Elmo, which means enough, let's move on and move from one section to the next, right? It doesn't have to be you. You can assign it to each individual throughout the, uh, you know, throughout your meeting structure and have one person do it each week or each month, depending on your meeting frequency. So now I'm going to share with you an agenda overview. So when everyone gets together, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we put some positivity on what's going on. Often with business, there's challenges. Sometimes we can get stuck in on the challenges and just see them, they're so proximate. We wanna make sure that every member of the team arrives with a win, something to celebrate, something that's going well that everyone else can kinda of celebrate their win and, and have their win celebrated as well. So we wanna start off on a positive note. The next thing is we wanna review our progress. And when I mean review progress, it's how are we doing on the initiatives we set out to accomplish? How are we doing on overcoming the challenges that we've, we've been facing? And we don't want to have sort of vague terms like, yeah, we're doing good, we're doing okay, we're doing better. We want to have some kind of a system where we can indicate clearly what our status is. So, for example, there's an excellent book called American Icon, and it's about how Alan Mulally, uh, who became the CEO of Ford Motor Company, turned the company around. One of the things that he did with his executive team was a red, yellow, green card system. And it's brilliant in its simplicity. The red card means uh, we have a problem and we don't know what to do. In other words, we're stuck. The yellow card means... Um, we have a challenge, but we know what to do and we're taking uh, affirmative action to, to overcome it. And the green card means we're on point, we're, we're doing well, we're, we're, doing, we're, on, we're on progress, we're, we're doing okay. So with that, what we want to see here is that we, there's probably going to be a smattering of red, yellow, and green. You want to watch out for your team constantly showing up with green cards. If, unless you're truly doing amazing things, there's going to be challenges. And if someone on your team doesn't show up with a red or yellow card every once in a while, you can kind of bet that there's, they're kind of hiding something. They're not sure how to express that they've got a challenge. They're trying to work it on their own and they're not trying to get some support on it. So I would guide you to take one of those people aside. If someone doesn't come with a red or yellow card for a while, take them aside and just have an offline conversation and say, hey, how is everything truly going? Is there anything that you need help with? Just don't let that you know, no, constant greens look like it's all perfect. There might be a little challenge lurking there. Uh, the next thing is we want to review our metrics, our KPIs or our critical number. And it's going to be different depending on what's going on with your business. But for example, if you're growing your sales, you want to track how many new proposals have we put out? How many new leads have we generated? How many meetings have we gone to? How many new clients have come on board? So we want to be able to track that. If, it's, uh, if you're a distributor or you have distribution in your business, we want to track inventory turns. How fast are we turn your inventory around? 
Um, if you have a service-based business, you want to track your technician utilization. Out of all the billable hours in a week, how many are all of your technicians actually billing? We want to make sure we grow that ratio so that we're more and more productive. So you'll have key numbers in your business that you'll want to be tracking depending on the nature of your business and also what you've got going on, what you're focusing on, what you're looking to improve and change in your business. Now, sometimes what's going to happen is somebody's going to have a challenge in one of the, one of the key areas of their business, and it's going to start going off into like a bit of, a, bit of the weeds. That's the time we want to have someone say, hey, let's just Elmo that enough. Let's move on and take that topic and allocate time with leadership outside of the meeting to do a, a deeper dive on that topic so that everyone else around the table that doesn't have, you know, that isn't the, the, the challenge doesn't bear on them. They're not having their time wasted. And at the end of the meeting, what we want to do is have a mindset check in. And what I mean by that is just, OK, how is everybody doing? Right. Yep. Doing good. Excited. I'm feeling a little bit worn out. We just want to kind of take the pulse of the team and just see how is everybody doing so that if there's anything, anyone starting to have a little bit of a challenge in, in terms of their energy or, you know, just their what's going on with them that you can identify that and then have a have a chat with them. Um, the next thing that we want to do here to, or to remember rather is we need to have consistency with our meetings. We, if whatever our meeting structure and timeline is going to be, if it's weekly or if it's monthly, it'll depend on your business or daily. Um, you want to make sure that you stick with it. Don't stop and then start. So start with the frequency that you can maintain so that everyone knows the meeting is going to happen and it's going to start and end on time and it's going to be productive and they're going to get something out of it and you're going to be moving your business forward. So I hope this has been helpful for you and I hope that you do get back with your team and, and reinstitute having good structured meetings to help grow your business. If you have any questions about anything like this, I'd love to hear from you and have a chat about how a meeting structure can help your business out and help you grow. In the meantime, have an awesome week. We'll catch you next time.